Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be covering a little bit of a recent controversy that happened here on YouTube and in the skincare world with Reflect Skincare and one of its co-founders or creative collaborator, Valkyrie, who if you're following the gaming community is probably somebody that you're aware of. And I'm going to give you my thoughts about what went wrong and how important is it to protect yourself from blue light. Let's jump into the content. All right, so if you're following any of the gaming community on Twitch or here on YouTube, you might be familiar with Valkyrie, Rachel Hofstetter. She is one of the biggest gaming stars in the world and probably, I would say, the top uh, female gaming star. And she recently was collaborating with a company to create a skincare line that was supposed to protect you from blue light. And in theory, this makes a lot of sense because especially among the gaming community, you're spending a lot of time in front of screens and we're trying to protect ourselves from blue light or high energy visible light. When we think about the effects of ultraviolet light, blue light, infrared, all of this occurs on a spectrum. And if you remember from basic physics in high school or college, you're probably familiar that we have ultraviolet light, which has ultraviolet A, B, and C, and we're looking at one end of the spectrum, and then we move into visible light. That's what our eyes can actually see, and it's all on a continuous spectrum. Once we hit about 400 nanometers, we can start to see that as blue light, and blue light can go all the way up to just a little over 500 nanometers. But the high energy visible light, that's the light that's actually a little bit closer to the ultraviolet spectrum, is anywhere from about 400 to 4. 50 and around 415 it's really one of the more concentrated high energy visible light hevl is uh, another way you might see it referenced online i've spoken at length about the effects of ultraviolet light on your skin you know that that's going to increase your risk for skin cancer and premature aging of the skin by showing lines and wrinkles and sagging of your skin over the course of your lifetime but blue light is an entirely new thing that the industry has started to focus on to try to better understand is it harmful to our skin and to what degree do we need to take steps to mitigate our risk to blue light Part of that is because we're all spending so much time in front of our phones, computer screens, tablets, and we're exposed to a lot of high energy visible light through those devices. But is it actually harmful to us? How much exposure are we getting? And is this something you need to worry about? I'll give you my thoughts on that shortly, but in general, Reflect Skin Care felt that this was something that individuals needed to be worried about and they wanted to create a line of skincare products that would protect against blue light. So as they were developing this line of skincare products, it only made sense to reach out to somebody who was in the gaming community, spending a lot of time in front of screens, and also connecting with an audience that spent a lot of time in front of screens. And Valkyrie, as she goes by on her Twitch and YouTube channels, was a natural partner. She's very charismatic, very dynamic, and she has a mind for business. And so they reached out to her, and this sounds like it was a collaboration that was in the works for quite a long time. Now, I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit because if you follow this, you know that the ending of the story is that Reflect Skincare was shut down and is no longer offering their product. So how did we get here? There's not a lot of clues left online because the Reflect Skincare website, their Instagram, all their other social media handles simply has a statement that the products have been discontinued and there's not a lot that you can look into. So we can look to other sources like statements that Valkyrie has made and I'm gonna link to those in the comments of this video. But in short, what happened is that during the development process, Ray was able to work with the company and look at their research and try to understand what is the effect of blue light on the skin. And during that process, she found their research and their products to be very compelling that blue light does cause harm to our skin and that these products would help to mitigate that risk. Now, up until this point, most dermatologists have not been particularly worried about the blue light that comes from our devices. When we are concerned about blue light, there's only a few populations that are more susceptible to damage from blue light, and that's individuals that have a predisposition to pigment problems like melasma. Melasma is a pigmentation that can occur in the skin, and it's more common in women than men, and it may have a hormonal component to it because it often shows up during pregnancy or in individuals taking oral contraceptive pills or other forms of hormonal contraception. If anybody has struggled with melasma, you know that it's incredibly difficult to treat and it's imperative to stay out of the sun because ultraviolet light can really flare it up bad. But if you struggled with melasma, you know that avoiding ultraviolet light is not enough. You also have to avoid high energy visible light and even infrared light. So that's 
on the upper end of the spectrum of visible light, just past the red that we can see, is infrared. And that's what you can feel as heat. And if you are exposed to a lot of heat, even if you're not necessarily getting ultraviolet rays, you can have a flare or a worsening of your melasma. And certain individuals may be prone to having a flare or increase in pigmentation due to high energy visible light. In our skin, we have something called opsin-3, and this is a receptor inside of our cells that can communicate with the melanocortin-1 receptor. Let me explain what that means. So opsin-3 is sensitive to light, particularly high energy visible light, and if you're prone to pigmentation, it may be overactive. Because it can communicate with melanocortin-1, this is one of the signals that tells your pigment cells, your melanocytes, to produce additional pigment, and this may play a role in the development or maintenance of melasma. These individuals, therefore, need to protect themselves not only against ultraviolet light, but probably high energy visible light and infrared as well. But I'm going to link to a couple videos that really break this down well by other really well-known YouTube creators. In short, most of the sunscreens on the market do not really protect us against blue light, high energy visible light. All of the chemical sunscreens don't offer much protection and only physical sunscreens with zinc that have large particles really provide much protection from this high energy visible light. The problem is that when you have large particle zinc, it's most likely going to leave a significant white cast and it's not very cosmetically elegant for anybody to use. This would, you know, in some cases be almost like using desitin zinc paste on your skin. It's going to do a great job protecting you from all the different wavelengths of light, but it sure isn't going to look very good. One of the other ways that we can protect ourselves against high energy visible light is through the addition of other ingredients like iron oxides. And I'm not going to spend a ton of time dwelling on that because I want to cover a little bit more in depth what happened to reflect skincare, but I will link down in the description of the video below a great breakdown by Dr. Dre who talks all about blue light and the use of iron oxides, how they need to be at a certain percentage, and how you can have different tints of those and get more protection from high energy visible light. So to jump back to reflect skincare, I don't really know what the whole set of ingredients were. Some people were able to get their hands on them, but they're not listed on the website anymore. And what ended up happening to be the demise of Reflect Skincare is that when the brand launched, the products became available. They did not publish any of the research that Valcre had been shown during the development phase. This led to a lot of mistrust by consumers because there were all these claims that blue light is really horrible for you and that you have to protect yourself, but they didn't publish the data showing how damaging screens could be, and they didn't publish data that showed why their products were best to help that. They were really relying on the claims of a famous YouTube and Twitch personality in order to sell a product. And I think overall, my impression is that Valkyrie came into this with good intentions and she was taken advantage of by a company that did not want to share their research. The reality is that when we do studies, clinical studies, or other bench research, it's very important to publish that so that it can be subjected to what we call peer review, so that other scientists can evaluate the data and comment if it makes sense, or write rebuttals. And it has to go through a peer review process even in order to get published by a journal. Now, there is the chance that there's intellectual property involved here, and that's really the claim that the company was making, is that if they released all these studies, other companies would just steal their data and make the products. And I don't know that I really buy that because there's a lot of other companies on the market that have proprietary data, but they can still find ways to protect that through patents and other mechanisms. So I think publishing that data would have been the right move, but what it did is it caused Valkyrie to put her reputation on the line and the brand suffered as a result. Because they failed to publish their data, Valkyrie took a lot of criticism, the company took a lot of criticism, and Valkyrie wanted to pull out of the deal. There were, of course, contracts in place making that very difficult, and of course, I don't know all the details as to what led to it, but eventually, over the period of a couple of weeks as this was going on in October, uh, Reflect Skincare completely shut down and stopped distributing products. They had had a huge investment from Ulta, the you know, beauty store that sells skincare and makeup. So this was quite a big debacle in the world of skincare. I think that Valkyrie really got wrapped up in it. I think she went into it with pure intentions, as I mentioned. Uh, she probably got to see the data. And the question then remains to everybody else, is this data legitimate? You know, I don't know her education background. Uh, but it can take a lot of education to really interpret those studies and to scrutinize them. And she feels very confident that they were legitimate, but nobody else can really tell that. So we have to take her word for that. But I don't think that there was any nefarious intent. When it comes to, do you need to protect yourself from blue light? 
on your screens? The answer is probably no for most people because most people are not highly sensitive to high energy visible light, especially if you don't suffer from things like melasma or post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation to a great degree. The amount of blue light that you get from your screens, you would have to sit in front of a screen continuously without a break for hundreds of hours to get the type of blue light exposure that you get from even a minute or two in direct sunlight. Still, the most amount of high energy visible light that we get is from the sun. That great big ball of fire in the sky exposes us to ultraviolet light through A, B, C, if you're not well protected through the ozone. Um, it also exposes you to infrared, that heat, of course, we all know that, and high energy visible light and all the wavelengths of the spectrum. So protect yourself from blue light. You really, you really need to do it for the sun, but Screens are not a big concern for the majority of people, and I'm sure that more research is going to come out regarding the effect of screens on our skin. We are spending more and more time on our devices every single day, every year that passes. We're more and more reliant on these, but it hasn't really been shown, and I think dermatologists still are in that camp, that the high energy visible light from your screens are not something you need to worry a great deal about. It's most important to protect yourself from sun exposure through the use of high quality broad spectrum sunscreens, physical barriers like clothing or hats, and um, sunscreens that contain iron oxide if you're worried about infrared wavelengths of light and high energy visible light. All in all, I think the lesson to be learned here is that there have been a lot of launches of different skincare uh, brands over the last couple of years as skincare has really had a moment since COVID began. And a lot of claims are being made by these skincare companies, and it's important to scrutinize those. Don't take them at face value. I'm not saying that that's what Valkyrie did, but that's certainly what the company expected you to do. They expected you to just take their claims at face value without them being willing to publish their research. So don't take claims at face value. Do your research. Get multiple opinions online from my channel, from Dr. Dre, from Dr. Lee, from uh, Cassandra Bankson, from Lab Muff, and there's so many others that I could enumerate, but do a lot of research. And if you have questions, ask, send messages. Make sure that you're not buying something just because I recommend it or that somebody else recommends it, but make sure it's the right thing for you. And then you're going to be able to build a skincare routine that works for you in the long term and not chase fads from here to there. Because every time a brand launches, they're going to make claims. They're going to try to create a trend, a fad that's going to try to get your money. And that's not necessarily serving you uh, and your best interest. So make sure you do your research. I hope this video was helpful and informative to you. Leave your comments and questions down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer as many of them as I can. Remember that I'm gonna to link to several other creators in the video description so that you can get more research on blue light and other opinions on this Reflect skincare debacle. I look forward to seeing you guys back next time.